Is this thing on? Wait to delay. All right, let's begin. Hello and welcome to a Hedgehog Make Stream. My name is Austin, aka uh, Zombie Hedgehog. There we go. <laughs> um, and today we are using uh, StreamYard to showcase our Trident build. So this is a Voron Trident, one of the many, many, many custom 3D printer designs, but um, this has been my belief that it's probably one of the best kits, at least to start off with. So we're talking a lot about this today. We'll be going in and starting the build process. With that, um, I'm also streaming on um, Twitch as well as YouTube because um, some people like both. So if some people like Twitch, some people like YouTube. I'll let you pick which one you want to be on and give me your feedback. So. Welcome on in, everyone. So I got a couple of exciting camera angles for you as well. So I have this right here. Look at this. I have the camera mounted slightly better. Um, this is kind of the main intent for this camera is to fire at, uh, you know, the workspace. So Hope you guys like it. Hopefully it shows up well, and hopefully the autofocus will work today. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. <laughs> I've started a little bit of the process. Um, and I'm actually going to remove this banner because it is in the way, but you get the idea. All right. Uh, so yes, I started building this over on one of my streams. I think it was maybe my birthday stream or something, but we started building the frame. So the frame should be pretty much good to go. The next part is going to be the, well, the next part of the frame is the rear uh, gantry spanner piece. And then the, the frame or the, the bed frame itself. So, good evening. <laughs> yes, Trident. So, who in chat has built a Trident before? Um, I have a, a 2.4 that actually printed all the parts for this build. I think I can actually switch over to it. Um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, here's my 2.4 currently in a pop-up tent because I don't know how my panel is yet. I'm working on a special custom rear panel. And honestly, this works pretty good. But we built this over on YouTube, so if you're interested, uh, go check out my channel and find the Voron 2.0 playlist. That was a fun build, and I'm even more excited for the Trident. So we are building a 250 Trident. This was sent over by LDO. Uh, thank you so much, Jason, for helping with this with this kit. So this is going to be a full-fledged LDO kit, as shown by the uh, the documents folder. <laughs> so this is sent over by LDO, and it's going to be the purple frame. And 250. So why 250? That's a very important question to ask before we get going. Most people will actually build a 300, and LDO is a special version called the 300 cubed version or something like that so it's an extra bit tall in the z-axis 250 is smaller it's going to be about the same build process as a 300 but a lot of the time you don't need to print more than 250 you can you can and honestly you can quite easily print a full plate of parts on an enclosed Boron, 
um, whether it be a 2.4 or a Trident, it still is quicker to heat up a printer like this, especially your chamber. And you will have a flatter plate because it's smaller. It's going to be flatter. So for the Trident, I picked 250 because I already have a handful of 300 printers. I have the simple core behind um, <laughs> this, which is actually like a 330. I have the Solvo SV06 Plus. Uh, somewhere I have a KP5L that's kind of out of commission. And then, of course, the 300 2.4. So a little bit of history. Vorons were designed around 250, around that size, but were scaled up to as much as 350. And that's as much as they will comfortably uh, recommend for this motion system. If you want to go bigger, generally you need a different style of gantry and typically bigger, um, wider belts to handle the longer belt pathing. So 250 is going to be a great build. I'm very excited. So why don't we jump into it? I actually have the manual up. And let me go to the actual beginning. And I got to find where we left off. So uh, there we go. So here is the Manuel. We're building a Voron Trident. And we've already built the frame. So we've skipped like all of this, all of the tedious stuff that you don't really need to see on camera. Oh, speaking of stuff to see on camera, <laughs> we have a ginger. There we go. Um, it's also required if you're building a Trident to have a stream kitty or just a cat in general. So this is Ginger. Everyone say hi, Ginger. <laughs> You're not done yet? Nope, no. As much as I would have loved to have worked on this, I held off for building on stream. Uh, but we have um, our stream kitty. I wonder if we can get like the cat on the frame type of thing. Are you able to stand on the frame? Look, are you able to stand on it? Yeah, no. No, this ain't no Charlie. <laughs> but the cat will be uh, inspecting as we go along. So, bye for now. <laughs> it's like watching a young Steven Charlie. I know, right? It's wild. Uh, uh, and speaking of, I also linked uh, Steve Build's channel in the video description over on YouTube because he did help develop um, this printer. So this is kind of his printer and this is the only printer that he will 100% endorse. <laughs> and he also remixed this hex tray which we'll be using for our art organization. Um, so it's been really awesome to watch his streams and see him work on printers and share his experiences. And I have learned a lot through the years, all of the different 3D printing streamers, Nero, Modbot, Steve, um, uh, everyone, everyone who I've ever watched. There are many, many, big and small. So thank you everyone who does stream their printer builds. I've recently been watching Digital Dragon over on Twitch. He's been doing a couple of um, different builds. So again, go find people. There are many people who stream their printers. Uh, go find them live. It's very fun to watch people building their stuff live. But I am live, so why don't we continue with the manual and go over to the AB Drive and Idlers. So the Idlers, we're using Rama's Idlers, Rama's Front Idlers. There's no real requirement to, but they look a little bit nicer and Hypothetically, it's easier to run belts through them, and I have the parts, so I might as well build them. So we have our um, A drive and our B drive in the back of the printer. And then um, the front idlers, and that's what we're going to be working on. So the first thing we need to do is find our components. Luckily, I've already sorted these, and I want to start off my... <laughs> my uh, iron, just in case they need to put more heat sets, because of course I'm going to forget one. 
No, if you're watching this on Twitch, we do not have any of these special commands. I apologize. This was going to be YouTube only, but I decided to go on Twitch as well. So, if you're if you're seeing comments in the future, um, they're probably and you don't know where they're coming from. They're probably from Twitch. So this looks like our Z-axis parts. I I put them all into inverted polymaker boxes. So they're not organized. Or they are organized, but I didn't write down what's in what, which would have been good to know. Um, these are our tool head parts. One box. I do recommend doing this if you're, you know, printing out parts by by what they are, by which section they are from. Just organize them. Um, Barnacles. Jerry has been organizing them in like Ziploc bags, which that works too. What hot end am I using? Ah, well, uh, West3D sent over a Thetis Rapido because that is one of my favorite hot ends. It's my favorite that I've tried. I'd love to try more in the future, but uh, for now it has the, a ridiculously high flow for what we need. And it's a single tool nozzle swap. So it's easy to switch out um, nozzles. I was considering using Revo for this, but uh, honestly, I wanted a little bit more flow than Revo. Even I know Revo now has high flow, but I already have a lot of existing tungsten carbide nozzles thanks to West 3D. So it'll pair nicely together and I can change it anytime. <laughs> That's the nice thing about these kits. Uh, nope, that's not it either. It's our skirts and lower section stuff. <laughs> Filament boxes for parts. Yeah, I actually thought of this idea from my Rook builds because it takes about two boxes to put um, all the Rook parts, including the frame. Okay. Hey, we made it. So these are our gantry parts we're using a couple of different colors here typically you'd use two colors one as your main color and then two as your accent but i actually went with two main colors so the main main color is going to be this right here so this is polymaker's new galaxy let me focus on that uh, galaxy teal has a little bit of a sparkle to it uh, compared to the typical ABS. Nothing crazy though. I mostly want this color to match kind of the outrun style 80s color scheme that I'm trying to go for here. So that's one of our main colors. This is the one I'm very excited for. This is the new Galaxy ABS Orange. So I feel like it's a very... I can't focus that close. It's a very nice shade of orange. And the galaxy on this is extremely vibrant, especially in person. So it's kind of like a gold flake galaxy. I think it looks quite well or quite very, very good. Looks good. So we have that. And then as our accent color, I think most of our accent colors are going to be pop pink, which is a nice magenta color. Also new from Polymaker. So those are our colors we're working with. And, um, so I have this manual up. I want your thoughts on keeping this on screen because it does take up quite a bit of the view. Maybe we can organize it a bit better, but uh, if it's too small to see anyway, I will just remove it and have it up on my side. So it'll look like this. And if you want to see the manual, it is available. The link is in the video description over on YouTube. Let's get out all of the mountains. So right now, these are going to be our AB idlers. I should have the heat sets already in them. I did that off camera. And we also need our, our screws and fasteners. Those are definitely very handy. I have them right next to me. I was using them for some stuff. Let's see. I've already taken this apart and put it back together multiple times, like the the box of the LTO parts. Um, so they're all a little bit scrambled. 
Jealousy of a micro center. I I don't have a micro center. <laughs> it's not very close. But uh, when I do travel, I typically try to stop by micro center. Oh, okay. You got some inland sparkle ABS. Looks similar. Nice. Very nice. So the one cool thing about the LDO kit is look at how many backup parts there are. There are a quite ridiculous amount of parts. In fact, this is probably the amount of fasteners you need for a rook kit. <laughs> so they just include this. Just spares. That's crazy. And the amount of fasteners. So, so many fasteners. So um, self-sourcing this would be kind of a nightmare. And I'm glad I didn't do that. Um, LDO also sponsored fasteners for the 2.4 kit I did previously. So I'm glad, um, I'm glad that they sent over a full fastener kit because no thanks. Like these little things like precision shims, um, precision spacers that are perfectly matched to the, the manual. And another thing about this kit, all the parts are already pre-vetted, right? This is a kit that many 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 people have built so you get this and you should be able to just build it based off of the manual that's the whole point um oh we also have okay that's a good thing to note there are there are ldo specific sections that i haven't really looked into maybe we should do that now before we go too much further but ldo has um they have their own manual for this kit i don't think it's too much different if i remember correctly but there are some differences in the kit uh guides i'll deal specific notes okay they have the wiring guide which is very nice Okay, this is actually, oh, um, did we miss, did we miss the T-nut bars? I think we missed the, <laughs> all of the, uh, the backer bars for the rails. I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, so that is fun. <laughs> I don't think I don't think we can slide them in after the fact. Uh, so if anyone has a kit, can you confirm? Because I've never used those. Backers, they're not backers. They're not backers. They are uh, T nut rail backers. So these things right here. So I'm guessing they. You no, know, yeah, they'll they'll have to slide through. So I believe we will probably have to take part the frame. Yeah, I'm surprised no one caught that. Um, I guess no one has built a LDO, an LDO printer when I was doing my initial build of the frame. Unbuild stream. Yeah, we get a little bit of unbuild. I, I built the whole thing and squared it up off camera to oh, make sure that we would have a easy build process. But I completely neglected the LDO part of the, of the manual. Now, I don't have to use these. I can just use those pop in um, T nuts, but I think we'll use these because it'll make our life a lot easier when they're installed. Make sure all the screw holes are tapped. I will do that. I will do that. 
fine. So what some of these are come not tapped. Those are tapped. Tap. Okay. So this isn't a 2.4, so we don't have to assemble the whole thing. I believe it's just the it's just these right here. Right? No, we no no no, I am very wrong. Of course, the whole thing. Yeah, we'll have to Yeah, so we have this one right here needs one. No, this this is the front, so this needs one right here. This needs one on this side. I believe they go on those sides. And then one on the C-axis. So this one is very easy to do. So I can remove these bottom two pieces and slide up those. But then I do need to remove this bar right here. So let's do that. So this is how you unbuild a printer. Very fun. So these, uh, oh no, these are three millimeter screws. Yeah, so we're gonna, oh, okay, you don't, yeah, no, sorry, you don't remove these, you just loosen them. You have to remove uh, these two right here. So not, not the worst thing in the world how these work already <laughs> so these just slide up so we have one and then two just like this so this is the rear so we'll put one of these in on the front like so Ooh, and there is invisible tape so I will uh, remove that. I guess it won't be visible at all because there's going to be a rail on it. Yeah, whatever. Good thing you didn't use thread locker. Oh, yeah, you don't use thread locker on the frame. <laughs> uh, uh, typically not because it's not a high vibration part. At least I wouldn't think so. This goes in. It's a very tight fit, uh, which would be nice because you can align it perfectly and then you just screw in your extrusions, or your, sorry, your rails. So that goes in like this, right on this front piece. It looks like that once it's in. <clears throat> okay. Then two, we take our rail, uh, and these are what, on the bottom. Right, the bottom of the y-axis. I believe this printer is the same same thing as the 2.4 for the motion system. Yes, we need to get the correct distance for the Y. Absolutely. It looks like we have to completely remove this screw anyway to get this on. So we can just use this bar right here to get the Y uh, correct. I'll take off the screws. Not that much of a, a setback, honestly, all things considered. That's like this, and then we can put this back on. Okay, so this is our Y rail, and the again to confirm the the backers on the bottom, right on the bottom. Fairly confident that they're on the bottom. Yes, they are. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. So we're going to get this, well, roughly where it needs to be. <laughs> and then I'm going to unscrew the screws from this piece. 
Now this part right here is genius. So I built Simple Core and I had a pretty hard time getting those Y extrusions parallel. Um, it took a little bit of effort <laughs> because there's no really reference to, to use. Now this is designed, so you take one of these extrusions and actually it's a short one, isn't it? Is it this one right here? Oh, it is, isn't it? Uh, okay, never mind. You take specifically that extrusion in the back, or is there a different one I can use? Just remembering now. It, it is the one from the back? Okay. So I'll remove the one on the back, which... Is that the one we measured to put in? That is on the bottom. So we're gonna put this back on. Do this, and I'll get this uh, squared up after. But it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Get it mostly in right now. Actually, this has to go in first because of the way it is. You're saying it has to be this one right here and there's no equivalent length like one from the bin <laughs> what film it used for that blue tray this is polymaker's new uh, starlight neptune so it has like a color shifting effect um, this is actually printed with zero part cooling and it turned out pretty good for no part cooling so it has an iridescent shimmering effect pretty nice all right, looks like we'll have to use this. Uh, I'm look, this extrusion is good. Oh, yeah, no, this one's the right size. I don't know if that's for, but maybe it's for the gantry X. Probably because it's not tapped. Yeah. Yeah, so we can keep that one in there and then just use this one, which is the same length. Luckily, we are very lucky. Because I do not want to have to take apart that rear piece. So we're going to get this lined up like this. And then loosen this side right here. And then tighten it a little bit. Just a little bit. Remove this. And then go to the rear. Put it on. And then, and then tighten it. Now I'm making sure that it's, you know, it's, I'm pressing down a little bit. And I'm holding it just manually. I can kind of feel it if it's centered or not. It has to be pretty much there. I'm not going too crazy with, you know, different pieces of tools like those uh, one, two, three blocks. Because honestly, I feel like the alignment tools get in the way sometimes more than I can just feel with my fingers if it's correct or not. You know, a little bit of manual um, alignment is sometimes easier at the end of the day if for some reason it doesn't work out right or whatever i can just <laughs> loosen this up and move it after the fact so those feel good they look good the right height it should be at least like flat in this direction you love new starlight but had to slow the print speeds to get it to behave um I would recommend bumping up the print temps, maybe. Bump up the printing temperature instead. Okay, so same thing for this side. We're gonna move this top extrusion. This, we'll just set this one as well. So this shouldn't mess up any, any of the squareness of the frame. Really shouldn't mess up anything except for a little bit of time spent on disassembling. So, fair note, if you're building this kit, read the manual. This is probably very explicitly stated in the manual. Um, but, you know, because I built one Voron before, I'm clearly an expert, so I know what I'm doing without having to read the manual. Uh, okay, this one didn't loosen enough, and it's binding up.
All right. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put this into here. We have to remove one of the screws. You have to measure the gantry on the 300 because LGO kit has 300 in the C. That's actually a good point. Um, these extrusion lengths are based off of the stock build. So, yeah, your mileage may vary with the LDO custom frame. You can get custom frames for these printers, like the LDO 300, or um, Kyle Davis actually has a very cool mod for the Trident, which is called the Sidekick. Uh, sorry, Sidekick. I always say that word. Side pack, Side P-A-K. Um, and it extends the top rail, so it goes across and adds all your electronics on the side instead of the bottom. So that's a fun mod that I would have done if I was building it from scratch. Um, maybe if I get a custom set of extrusions in the future, I will consider it. But for now, we'll just do the inverted electronics mod for this so we can just lift up that bottom panel to access the electronics. back on and then use uh, this piece right here to get roughly aligned and I am actually watching the StreamYard chat so if I miss anything um, I will, or just one of my mods let me know, and I will go back and read the comment, or whatever the case is. Okay. I'll put that on, make sure it's pressed down. Oops. I think this is already good. Then double check. Yeah, good. Look. You've had to flip your uh, year 352.4 one too many times. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's not fun because on a, a 2.4, you can't access electronics by removing the bed because the bed is fixed. So you have to physically flip it out. I think there's a drawer mod, which sounds intriguing, but um, again, the nicest mod I've seen is the the side side pack mod. So all your stuff is still accessible, but you, know, you can access the printer and the electronics at the same time. Um, the rat rig is also cool because electronics are in the back, but you still have to reach around to the back. Especially if you have the really big one, it can take a little bit of time. So, these top two are on, but not squared, so we're going to flip this around like this, and use our very flat table as a reference surface. Now loosen that up again. And go for it. I can use the, the blocks in this just to put in the corners to roughly get it roughly square, roughly. Because the whole frame is square, it should kind of just fall into place. I mostly just want it flat up against the table. That's the, the biggest requirement. And it shouldn't actually be too big of an issue either because there's nothing connected to this. So it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. Okay. Good enough to me. I'll flip it around to the other one. I love this frame color. I'm so glad I want that purple. And no, we're never going to do a Joker build. Never, ever, ever, ever going to do a Joker build. I refuse to put a green part on this printer. Or vice versa. I'm not putting purple on my green printer. 
but we'll have a green printer thanks to West 3D. Um, one of the last LDO green kits, and then we know how the purple printer thanks to LDO, which should be one of their last kits. Otherwise, if you're going from a scratch build, I'd probably go to Space Gray and then go with some really fun colors. Did you make the blocks or buy them? Um, you do not make these. If you make these, you have too much time on your hands. <laughs> yeah, those are precision made in a industrial factory. Oh, do we actually? Did we slide the the front rail in? I don't think we did. We forgot to slide the rail in. Oh no. Okay. I'm gonna cheat. I'm just gonna do this bottom one. Did we slide it in? Oh, okay. There's yeah. There's only five rails. Thank okay. No worries. We we got this. You can be no beam mod for the two head. Uh, no. We are going with the stock LDO cable for this. Uh, eventually, we might go can bus, but for now, we'll stick with the non weird screen in the tool head thing. <laughs> Uh, welcome in, uh, Panzer Kitten. We're currently rebuilding the frame a little bit because somebody forgot about the LDO specific uh, rail nut backer bar thing that is quite lovely if you remember that it exists. Very lovely. So lovely. Okay. For some reason, this one wants to like lift up as I screw it in. I don't know why. But some of these, they want to like move the frame as you screw it. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. It's like moving this the frame up and down as I screw it in. So I might have to put like this bar on it and then tighten it in or something. Just keep it flat. That looks like it did the trick. To me, okay. Not to this one. Same thing. Huh. I'll put this uh this bar on and do a bunch of moves at once to make sure it stays square-ish. Okay. Just a little bit. Just a little. Perfect. All right. So that is the main frame. And we have this one right here, which will go into this extrusion, but that's not too bad. I'm guessing goes into this extrusion. And then that should be the last one. Check the angle on the one you need to hold down a Titan. Um, they should be pretty much good. <laughs> I had that same issue on my 2.4, and it worked out fine. So this I'm gonna put back in the box with the rain kit. We won't do that for a little bit, and now we can continue. Hopefully, so. The next note is not until page tw uh, 79, so we're good for a little bit. We are on page 23. <laughs> so remind me to get to page 29. So the first thing we're going to do, the real first thing, is we're going to insert heat, ins heat inserts, which I've already done. So we're really just going to identify which pieces these are so i think this is our one um this right here we need that first 
and then it actually has us do the idlers first. <laughs> okay. So for the idlers, we have to do Rama's idlers. Well, we don't have to, but that's what I've chosen for this build. So for those, I'm guessing they're very similar to the 2.4. So we have our two bodies right here. And we have uh, these two pieces here. And then in pink, we have these two pieces here. And the front covers, which we don't need. I've been considered using um, metered torque wrenches to get the perfect tightness on nozzles. I have not. I have not. Uh, it does not take much torque, really. And you can usually feel it. So I use one of these. Um, using this with a little bit of... It's not going to focus well. It's fine. Using these with a little bit of force usually is good for me. Although, if you're uncertain about kind of the feel of torque, then I would recommend getting a torque wrench. Um, just get one size for standard V6 nozzles, if that's what you run. Or a universal one, if, um, if this is a cheap enough one that exists. Alright, so the idlers, I'm going to go to Rama's off screen. And I should actually have, I purchased a kit um, from Fabrico for my 2.4. And I didn't use any of the fasteners because they were the wrong color. But the LDO kit has black fasteners. So we're going to be able to just use this. So let's take all of these parts and dump them into this tray. There is a printable torque wrench. Yes, there is actually. Um, I have one. It's around. I haven't gone around to using it though, because I just like my little, you know, clicky one. Too useful. Because I can use that for removing and tightening nozzles. But let's get all of the Rama specific bolts, and I guess we have bearings too. Yes, LGO and Fabrica Rock. Very much so. So let me pull up the manual. The first thing that we need to do is grab our pins. So I have pins somewhere. Where the heck did I put those? Let me find the pins. It's the pits. Uh, I feel like I have them close by. But that would be that would have been good to find before. So they just sent over pins. <laughs> so I have a, a a bunch of well, a couple of pins somewhere, and I don't know where they are. So that's nice. I would have put them in this bag, but that would have made way too much sense. We need the idlers. We need that set up. Okay. 
Hey, PF Dennis, welcome on in. Um, it looks like we have a raid over on Twitch by Big Jano. Thank you for the raid. How was your stream? I am streaming live onto Twitch and YouTube today for the Voron build, and we're now looking for some missing components that uh, come from a different mod. Frame looks familiar. Yes, it probably looks familiar. It was great. Mer uh, Merc projects and Marvelous. Awesome, awesome. Well, if you don't know, um, I am going to be going to Murph, thanks to Polymaker, so you'll see me there one way or another. And I'm very, very excited to go. I really can't wait. Um, I cannot wait. I'll probably end up using like a, a screw instead of a pin or something like that. Oh my god. Yeah, it's really not... It's not a proper build series if I don't lose one of the main critical components to build. Right? And there's two little pins. Just two little pins. You are putting... You are pulling off all the parts you old V0 for the upgrade. Didn't realize the time. Yeah? What, the time it takes to to take him off <laughs> or how much time it took you to build it okay well if I was smart I would have put them in the actual fastener bag and I don't think I did I can check I don't think they gave you pins as like a spare for anything I think that will be strange But they include so much stuff. They even include... Aldeo gives you some clear PTG to use for your stealth burner front. Like, there's that much level of attention and detail. It's crazy. You get involved in zone. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha! I want to look around for a second to see if I would have put it somewhere relatively close. They're not with the other part, so I did take them out and kind of preemptively plan on using them. That's good.
<sighs> uh, what's the advantage of the idler mod, or is it just an aesthetic? It technically will give you better control over the front, uh, I guess, squareness. So, if you tighten apart, and let's say it's slightly skewed like this. You know, this is extreme, but, you know, let's say it's, it's skewed like this. You can make it so the actual idler bearing is square with the frame. Because it has two screws to kind of tilt the idler. Uh, so it should be a very good system for that. I had good luck with my 2.4, which is why I wanted the same thing on this build. And it looks nicer because it's thinner. It looks quite nice. So I don't know if I can really skip that part because they are, it is a main part of the build, unfortunately. But might have to just carry on if I can't find these and then look for them off camera. That's really the only mod I'm doing for this, or the main modification. All the other ones are less important. Purple. Yes, just look at the purple printer. Look at the purple printer. You know you want to. Well, is there anything I can use instead of pins? <laughs> I don't think I can, right? Yeah, I know. It needs to be flush. I have to use pins. I can't just use a bolt. Hmm. Any suggestions? <laughs> Any suggestions? Otherwise, I'll just go to the rear idlers and pretend like the fronts don't exist. So I can skip them. I can come back to it. Honestly, that's what we'll do. So we'll skip the front idlers because um, I can't find the pins that I'd purchased uh, separately. Or, well, I'll, West 3D sent them to me separate. Um, I'm building the Rama's idlers, but I have lost my or misplaced my pins that I was planning on using for them. And without spending hours looking for them. I would like to just... Oh, there's a CV1 heatsink. I've been needing one of those. Alright. Um, I'd like to just carry on with the build. Your suggestions aren't helpful. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. So let's continue. So if I was to successfully get those installed, the next thing is the rear motor mounts. So we have... Uh, let's see. This one right here. That's not correct. Is it correct? Yeah, I guess so. We have this right here. And I'll pull up the manual so you can kind of follow along right here. The frame needs yellow. Uh, no yellow, but it's getting orange. It's getting orange at least. See so this part right here, we need some M5 by 30. So what I've been doing for these builds is only taking out screws as I need them. To kind of keep them organized instead of laying them all out at once. I feel like it's easier to control the chaos this way. So we're going to find some pretty long M5 button heads. Their socket. Don't think one's over there. I'm 
five by ten. There's gonna be too many of them. Let's see. Not those, not those. The it, it comes with these like metal handles. I thought that was interesting. It comes with metal handles. There we go. These ones right here, M5 by 30. And I also, I put the bag into the holder before I put the stuff in it. And then I put everything on it. So I'll know that when I look at it, that this right here is the button head M5 by 30. So that's a little bit of a life pro tip. And these slots are perfect size for those little bags. So we need two of these going in like this. We should probably got the motion kit before I get too much further. Not the motors, but the motion, motion components, cables, belts, motion. So this is our little motion box where we should have some idlers. Uh, handles for the doors or to carry the printer? That is a good question. I'm not completely sure. But either way, you can print both of them. Good bearings right here. I'll just leave this box over here. You take, you know, get a lot of space for building a printer like this because you're going to have everything laid out if possible. Yeah, okay. So we're going to immediately jump into the the bearings. So this is a Voron bearing stack. Where there are stacks of bearings and precision shims. So I'm going to dump out all my bearings into this organizer over here. Okay, and we got to find these shims. So I believe these are just the... Those little ones I was showing off. The brass ones. These right here. I believe these are precision spacers slash shims. One millimeter thick. So that should be perfect for this. right into here those know what they are so I'll keep the bag very, very clearly not regular components so uh, we're gonna put this onto the desk like so do it over here so we have, let's just zoom in, let's zoom in, we can always get that back. Perfect. We have, I'm going to start with this one, we have a shim. And then a bearing, another bearing. And then two shims, not one, but two. Yes, the camera is working quite well today. And then a bearing, bearing, and then a shim. And on this side over here, it is simple. We have a shim and two bearings this will keep the bearings from rubbing on the printed part and then lined up with the rest of the stack or the other you know the whole belt path for the entire printer like lego assembly I, 
really with the Voron kits, it is pretty much like a big kit, except a little more technical, slightly more technical. Hello, John. How's it going? Idler time. About that. <clears throat> About that. Um, I have misplaced my pins for the Rama Idler mod. So, and I don't think I printed the regular ones. So we're gonna just carry on, and then hopefully I will find them. <laughs> uh. All right. So next we are gonna find this over here and press it on like that and we are threading into the plastic so it has a note not over tighten someone's going to give it a little a few turns on each one so and then just kind of lightly get this in doesn't have to be tight this has to be in. So there we go. That is one of the motor mounts. So this is our A, A drive motor mount. So there we have that right there. And then we're probably going to do the same thing. Oh, no, we're going to do the motor first. Okay. Okay. Time to bust the motors. Motors, motors. So for this version of the build, we have the high temp motor kit. I don't know if it's the stock for all of them, but uh, we have these lovely 0 0.9 degree high temp motors. So these will hypothetically get you cleaner prints at the cost of reduced top end speed. But these are the motors right here, 0 0.9 degree steppers and what LDO has done is instead of having this long long cable they just have a little connector which is perfect because I don't I very much displease having the long attached cables on these on these motors they're high temp how are you able to hold them with your bare hands um, my hands are um, industrialized they're used to High temp environments, apparently. <laughs> if you treat an LDO kit the way you've been skipping steps, it'd be a lot of bad tracking. Yeah, right? Uh, it's 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 not like Lego where you have to go step by step, but there's different sections that you have to do. Is that just a microfit 3? Yep, they just crimped on a, a microfit um, connector, which is perfect for these. Hey, Pete, welcome in. And if I miss you joining in, um, I am streaming to new platforms today, so uh, feel free to say hi if if I did miss you. <laughs> Alright, so this is the part where we have to align some pulleys. So I need my motion kit, which has two pulleys, 20 tooth. Asbestos hands are bad for you. I would not recommend touching or eating asbestos. Oh, also, the coolest thing about this kit is the little mini grub screws, which are a pain to put thread locker on, come pre-applied with thread locker. So these all have the a little bit of blue thread locker on. It doesn't take much, but it's so hard to get just a little bit on by doing it by hand. So I'm happy for that. I'm just going to dump these uh, into one of the bins. There we go. So, let's get that installed. That just takes a 2 millimeter wrench, I believe. No, if you're on Twitch, the regular Twitch stuff is not active because I am cross-streaming onto YouTube as well. So it's recorded. And so people on YouTube can, can stop in if they want. Oh, these are the wrong size. Uh, uh, yeah, I figured that was the wrong size. Wrong size. 
Those are for different ones. Yeah, these are the these are the ones we want. Welcome on in. We're, yeah, so these should be two millimeter for the larger grub screws. I would know because I installed too many of these. All right, so that goes in like this. Oh yeah, the thread locker is very much applied. It does not want to, to screw in. That's not going anywhere. I'll do is top tier. Yes, yes. If you're going to be looking at building a, a Voron, I would strongly consider, if it's your first time, or even if it's your fifth or sixth time, consider one of the LDO kits. It pretty much has everything you need just in a box. It's the closest to off-the-shelf Voron experience that you're going to get. Especially with all the add-ons and extras and just attention to detail. I built a 2.4 that was partially self-sourced, and I would have much rather had a kit from LDO. The parts are great, but the process is not as fun self-sourcing. Now, West3D, it, they do have a self-source configurator, so you don't have to... You get the self-source benefit of being able to select every single little part that you want, or... Or it, but, but it comes in one configurator, so you get a box of all these parts, and they should be all be compatible. So that could be an option if you want to pick your own controller board. Maybe you want to get a Manta or um, you know better motors or whatever the case is. You can select that with the West 3D configurator. I have a link in the video description if you're interested in that. But this is also a great kit and. It saves you a lot of time if you follow the instructions. So speaking of following instructions, we are going to take this little alignment tool and align this first motor with a pulley. There we go. So that when I hold it up like this, the A is like in the middle of here. So we're just getting it roughly, roughly lined up. All right. You got your printed parts for 2.4 from West3D? Yes, West3D is one of the few suppliers who actually offers printed parts for your uh, for your Trident. And I believe that includes mods, depending, but you'll have to contact them for uh, the correct information. There we go. Oh, that's, that feels so much different the 0.9s, manually spinning it. That's crazy, versus the 0.8s. I'm so used to the, the I use speedy powers on every single printer, including my Rook builds, just because they're nice motors. <laughs> so we have this right here. Um, you have to note the motor orientation. So we should be installing it like this, where the, the cable goes that way. And that makes sense. Be no, it doesn't. Does that make sense? Um, I'm sure, I'm sure it makes sense. I'm sure it makes sense. I thought we're going to have the rear bar. Oh no, no. It goes like, wait, does it make sense? <laughs> I'm so confused. Is that going in like this? It's the A motor drive. So that would go on. How does this work? 
with the extrusion already on? Does it kind of just slide over and then you tighten it on? Huh. Guess we'll find out. Cables run down the back pillars. Oh, they do. Okay. Okay. A little bit different than 2.4, of course. <laughs> Still getting used to that, but this is a fixed gantry, so you don't need them uh, wired the same way. Cool. So yeah, that goes like that. And we need three M3 by 30s. So I'm gonna find those. Three by 25, three by 20, almost there. <laughs> Three by sixteen. I'm three by thirty. There I go. So same for before, I'm just going to dump out the whole entire bag into one of these bins, uh, but put the bag on the bottom and then put the screws on top so I can remember what length they are by not having to measure it. But we're going to take these right here and so we them into the motors. You only need three screws to attach a motor. The fourth one is um, bonus, but it's not necessarily needed. So for this, I'm just going to lightly thread these in. Like that. And uh, should be, we should be good. You want to verify that the idler is in its correct position. Um, mine actually does feel a little bit low. So I'm going to have to adjust that. So when you look at it, like from the front right here, So you can see that the, the pulley is a little bit too low. A little bit too low. So we'll have to move it up a bit. Which is, again, not too bad. You just loosen up two of the screws. This is why I feel like that little printed part is not the most useful because you want to align it when it's installed. Not, it's a little hard to do it beforehand. I had the same exact issue on my 2.4. I had to adjust every single one of these. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, that looks centered now. I'll do both of these grub screws. There we go. So now, now it should be, it should be much better. So that lines up. All right, so that is the A drive. And now we're on to the B drive. The whole entire gantry goes up in like half an hour if you're not streaming and if you know where all your parts are. It's a very, very quick process. In fact, this whole printer can be pretty quick if you really just sit down and build it. <laughs> it's kind of surprising. But when you stream and when you don't have your stuff organized that well, it tends to go a little longer. So do you like this format right here where I have the manual up and I'm kind of working with a partially box screen? Do you guys like this? I feel like the camera should be on the other side, but nah, it is what it is. It's not that, uh, not that bad. Let's flip this around, focus on that part. And we're gonna do the same exact thing, where we put in a bunch of bearings. A fastener's back when I'm not in them. Works for you, a bit big. The manual's big. Well, I want to make sure you're actually able to read the manual if needed. I can always get rid of the manual, but I would either keep it like this or I completely remove it. 
which I think that works too. We'll do that for a bit. So for this, we're gonna use one of those bearings. Sorry, shim, bearing, bearing, two shims, one, two, Yeah, full screen manual. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Um, I might change that for a second. I just threw that on last minute to have it on there. You like the retro style colors? Yeah, I like them too. I love that color scheme. We have that, that, and then this. But I do like the Canon camera pointed up kind of close like this. It gives it a very nice field of view and it looks pretty good in, in my opinion. Hey, still like your research. Welcome in. So I'll take this layout and kind of optimize it again for the next stream. Whenever that is. Uh, but now that we've started this process, it's probably going to be as many days as I can possibly do this in a row until we get it done. That's typically how these builds go. All right, so we have this in here. Uh, as a note to Pezliz, if you're watching, uh, can you remind me to add better music? Remind me to add better music for future streams. That would be very wonderful. Okay, so there that goes. I guess we're skipping a step. No, we're not have these on like this everything's still perfect there we go <laughs> thank you for the reminder give music uh yes there's some slight background music playing if you can't hear it let me know and i can increase the volume but i have it up a uh, pretty pretty high So you have this, and then once again, we're going to do that motor um, install. Sound alerts are not on. No, they're not. Because we are not streaming using a regular stream platform. We're using StreamYard. So we can stream to the two platforms. Do not increase the volume. All right. I figured it was good. This is where I typically leave it at. Apparently, Trident is a J-pop band. <laughs> That's the music she's playing. Okay. Nice. Very nice. All right. So for this one right here, I'm just going to, you know what? We're going to say, you know, ignore this little install tool. And we're just going to put this on. And then we're going to use the actual part to align it. So we're gonna note the motor orientation. It should be facing like this and like that, allegedly. And then we're gonna use three of those M3 by 30 screws. If you're building one of these printers and this is probably something we're gonna do on I don't know, some either video or stream, but go over the tools needed to build a printer like this. It's not many, but I strongly recommend individual drivers for your three most common screw types, which is 2.5, 2, 2.5, and 3 millimeter hex. Do not get ball ends. Ball ends are nice, but you can't apply a lot of torque onto smaller fasteners or you will strip the heads. Ask me how I know. Trying to download Orca Slicer at the moment. Follow the link. What's assets download for Windows? But give you a bunch of files. So you're going to unzip the unzip the the zip file, 
and there is a file called Orca Slicer. Run that file. Um, there is no installer at the moment, as far as I'm aware. You just kind of run that executable, and I just pin that to my taskbar once it's done. And then once you've launched it, you should be able to like type in Orca, and then that'll pop up. Real issue isn't the printer testing is <laughs> slicers. You have to figure out what each setting does. Yeah, that's why typically I stick with one that kind of suits me best. Although different slicers have their advantages, um, I just stick with one. Not a virus. This is super legit. Yeah, pretty much. Learning slicer is a big part. Yeah, so I, a slicer will make the difference between a good print or a really bad print on the same printer. Like even these parts, I've had some, you know, I might have to adjust my minimum layer time or do something to fix a little bit of like Benchy hull line. So, and of course, like my, like look at this squish. There's like almost no squish on this print. Uh, this was when I just switched over to the, the smooth PEI. And while it feels smooth and it's a very weird finish, it definitely needs a little more squish, uh, I, I feel, <laughs> as you can see. I like texture because it hides it hides that all a lot. And with a smooth PEI, you have to be very, very specific on how much squish you have. But I like the color. And I actually kind of like the effect. <laughs> it works, so I'll leave it. I'm not going to bother reprinting these parts because they're, like, they're still functional. And at this point, you know, once it's built, I'm not going to be staring at each individual little printed part. So good enough for me. And if we really want to, we can, you know, reprint parts as we go and uh, etc. All right. So last thing we have to do is install the idler. Uh, once again, we're going to just use the actual bearings to line it up. I'll do this like this. It adds character. Absolutely, you're right. All these builds are custom. They're they're all custom. These are one of a kind printed parts. So treat it as custom. Make it your own. Where is nice? Replace all screwdrivers with them. Yes, I have all of my main, like actual screwdrivers too. Um, those are all wearers. The special USA edition that are <laughs> red, white, and blue, because you know that's a thing. <laughs> go, go USA. And the worst part about those drivers are so these ones they have a nice little like this one has a two on it. Um, if it would focus. But this one, you can see that it has a two like, oh, OK, I can clearly see what size it is. Yeah, the USA edition um, as a star because, you know, form over function. Am I right? So I'm just going to get these pretty much lined up. The pulleys are a little bit bigger, so you have some amount of deviation you can be off be off a little bit with these but you want to be as centered as possible just to eliminate any rubbing or any other issues we'll get it tight and then i'm looking at it straight on should be good so you have quite a bit of extra distance you have like a whole flange worth almost that you can be off and it'll still be good so this is now aligned as you can see as you might not be able to see this direction there we go that is aligned perfectly There we go. 
Thank you, doing general tuning on a rat rig 400. Oh boy. Good luck. Uh, the bigger the printer, <laughs> the more fun it is. There we go. That's it. So the next part would be assembling the the idlers, but we're going to skip that part. We're going to pretend like we don't need idlers. We don't need them, but we can do some of these these nuts. Where are they? So we're going to be on this step right here. I'll zoom back out on the camera and show you what we're working on next. Somewhere like there. Still getting used to this. Uh, I might change this in the future, but I don't have much space. So I have a ceiling mounted camera jig. It's kind of cool. So that's what we're doing. Let's go back to here. We're going to find the M5 T nuts. These are M3. And here are the M5s. 69 pieces. 69. Nice. So I want to put these nuts over here. There we go. All my M5s. Um, I'm going to make sure they're all M5s for this. Yes, it looks like they are. And they have to be installed in a very specific orientation. So what I like to do for these, what do they call drop in or uh, they, they kind of slide in, slide in nuts is I like to use a screwdriver and kind of line it up. So I'll put it in. Oh, this is in the way. Oh man. This would be kind of a pain actually. <laughs> yeah, I kind of get it in at an angle and kind of wedge it in place. It's going to be very hard to show, so I'm not going to, but you got to kind of wedge it in and then shim it back and forth. And once it's in, it should be able to move fairly free. So just repeat that for the rest of them. So I kind of use the thread of of the nut to, to get it in place and then move it back and forth until it goes in. So once you figure out a little bit of it, it's a lot easier. Drop in and roll. Yeah, you gotta drop in, you gotta roll it, but then you gotta also kinda wiggle it back and forth to get it aligned. And you get them on the bottom too. And then make sure that if you're doing this, these screws are in, or the holes are in the right orientation. So you want the, the hole for the screw to be towards the front of the frame. Oh, well, we don't need, we have the bar on there, so we don't actually need the bottom ones. So that's good. Is it good? No, we still need them. We still need them. The bar has to be centered and then they go in. That's how it works. Confuse me for a second. A little finicky, but you know, they do kind of click into place once they're in. There go. All right, so all of those are in. I will repeat the same process in the back here. This, so with the lever to get it in and then kind of slide it. I kind of, I don't know, it's, it, 
hard to explain, but you kind of just have to fidget with them to get them in. That's my experience. It's probably an easier way. There's probably better to just preload these before you do it, but... These ones at the top are hard because you have this bar. See, it's a hard time getting your wrench in unless you have one of the angled ones, which I guess we could pull out. At least there's no preload six million nuts section before you continue. Yeah, I I'm not looking forward to preloading all the nuts in the V0. Because I will be building a Micron Plus in the near future. It's actually easier to do it this way. Now it's like stuck. Now I want to use my standard wrench. I will be building a V0. I'm sorry, a Micron Plus, which uses a V0 frame. So we'll see what the process is for that. Yeah, this one's like stuck in here now. And I don't want to de-thread it. So... A hack I can use is take an M5 bolt like this, thread it in, then use the actual bolt itself as a lever to um, to get it on. Micron is a V yes, it's a V2 out of V0 part, so it's a uh, 5015 V2, and specifically. Micron is uh, our Micron Micron Plus is a 180 build. So Steve actually has I have a link in the video description, but Steve has a recent build series building a Micron Plus. And as soon as I saw it, I said, "Oh yeah, I got to get that. <laughs> I have to get it." Because it's the perfect size, 180, great size for a printer. Actually, I'm gonna keep this, yeah, I'm gonna do it differently. Um, can I, no, I gotta, yeah. You, you can roll them in and then use the screw and like screw it in, sort of. No, you gotta pop them in place first. Man, these are these my favorite. So I kind of get it mostly in. And then you can screw it in, get your your M5 in, and then get it the rest of the way. So it's able to slide back and forth. Whew, and two in the bottom. <laughs> We're coming your Micron kit from Fabrico. Awesome! Did you get the standard or the Micron Plus? What is he, what even is the standard? I don't know what the standard size is. Micron Plus specifically. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, it seems like a good kit. So definitely look for your uh, preferred vendor and look into getting one of those. Now, I don't know, or maybe you can help me provide a rough cost difference between a V0 and a Micron Plus, if you have any idea. I haven't looked too much into the pricing, but I'd be curious to know what the the additional cost is. Because don't get me wrong. V0s, they seem like nice little machines. I have built numerous rooks with that build plate. I know exactly what you can print on them. You can print stuff like um, these little minis right here. This one's Bob. Happy birthday, Bob. But stuff like this prints really nice on a small build plate. But you run into issues where you want to print something slightly bigger or more than one part at a time. And it's just... It can be a little bit annoying. Let's just put it that way. It can be slightly annoying to have that small of a build volume. So, when, when a 180 exists... get a 180 or better yet get a Trident 250 yes takes up more space but it's a lot more usable a lot more usable 
in my opinion. I've heard that some people buy a V0 because they want something that's small and, you know, 120 is a perfect build volume for them. All right, great. Great. Because, yeah, I mean, I... Those are all in, finally. I, I printed a lot of useful stuff on my little brooks, and... It's surprising. I think you can fit one of these um, IK3D dinosaurs on it, right? Yeah, on a, one of the increased Z height rooks, you can fit one of those on. You love your rat rig more than your Vorons? I mean, rat rig... Is that 30-30 extrusions? But they're just faster printers. They're better for PLA. Because they use the beautiful EVA toolhead system, which I'm using on my big printer back there. I love it. Vorons, as far as I really care, they are um, ABS printers. They're designed to be printed, or they're designed to print ABS first, and then PLA second. So that's why I love EVA, because it's kind of more focused for cooling and for, you know, balanced. Uh, it's just it's just a nice tool head, let's put it that way. Self burner is great. It works well for um, ABS. It works very well. A 400. Yeah, for, if you have a 400, man, that's like a little bigger than that. Yeah, you need a pretty beefy setup. Have Prusa Mini and V Minion for small. Exactly. A Prusa Mini, V Minion, both 180 printers. Those are perfect for a small printer. V Zero is just small. So you might as well build a Micron Plus or a Salad Fork if you're um, considering building a V Zero size printer. Back to the build. We're going to skip the front idlers and go straight for the rear the rear extrusion so this is our b motor we just put together and this is going to go on like this it's the back there so i should just like pop into place is that what's going to go on it's kind of a weird assembly but yeah you just kind of slide it over and then it slips in and you push it back like that rotate this whole thing Okay, and then you have to make sure all of your T-nuts are aligned before you go. So push the whole thing to the frame and adjust the T-nuts, the top and the bottom. There we go. Building 800 millimeter, but that's not a cube. 800 millimeter, that's big. That's big. You purposely did not get the 500. You want it to fit through doorways. Ah, uh, the 400 is half inch wiggle. Good to know. Well, what what size doorway? Because I have some small doors. Um, but 500 also has the major disadvantage of having a really large bed that might not be as flat. So you have to do some uh, major bed meshing. So for a 500, you really need to get the the new, uh, what's that probe called? I have one. I have one. The 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 quick quick probe. The the really quick probe. <laughs> uh, beacon. That's the one. The beacon probe. So you'll want to run a beacon on that because it'll scan the whole bed. Get a very nice mesh if you're printing something very big. Otherwise, use an adaptive, adaptive bed mesh. Uh, we're not going to set up any giveaways for tonight. I will do one on a future stream. So uh, nothing for tonight, unfortunately. Although I will plug currently, if you're watching this live, there is a contest going on in the Polymaker Discord. So I have a link to that down in the video description, YouTube, 
or you can do bang discord over on twitch if you're watching live and you can enter a color swap print so more information is available on the discord let me know if you have any questions 40 by 40 scan takes 90 seconds yeah i do a 100 by 20 bed mesh because you can have uh all, during your large travel movements you should just scan as many points as you possibly can because why not it doesn't take any extra time it's like how many rows depth that you're going all right bakeries have a good night Uh, CP Geek says, went into the ERCF channel on the Borg Discord and asked if anyone's on their EF ERCF to the point of turnkey plus standard maintenance reliability. Uh, yeah, some people have gotten pretty good luck with their ERCFs, but at least specifically mine has been more of a tinkering little um adventure than anything so would i recommend ercf probably if you're building yourself do not buy a pre-built ercf print all the parts make sure everything goes together well and make sure you build it extremely good remember similar to a trident it's only as good as you build it and it's only as good as you set it up so i fully believe that if you have a, a really good setup for an ercf it could work great which is the Enraged Jarbert Carrot Feeder. Um, my current setup is not ideal. So let's continue, let's continue with this build before we get too sidetracked. And five by tens. I'm using a lot of these. Put them over here. Grab a couple. I love these. Uh, Love the sorting trays. Very useful. And the size perfectly for the LTO kits. So we need to put two on the top. Um, this is where you might have to break out the the ball end driver. Because slightly too in the way to properly screw in. Uh, you'd have to do like the, the turning thing, but we're just going to grab a, luckily the LDO kit does come with the, these fast, or these drivers. You never want to torque down a screw using a ball end, but you can get it kind of tight and then use this to, to finish torquing like that. That's how you should use these. Never use the ball end. Now on the three millimeter size. Uh, screw holes you can I still don't fully recommend it but they do take a lot more to break or to, to, to strip so we're just gonna give this a couple of turns until it feels snug okay good enough just just has to be held in place you like building, you like tuning, but you're done. You want to work, not having to play with it. Yeah. So there's a reason why I'm not even using my my big simple core back there. It's because I have an ERCF hooked up to it. And it's not as simple as just printing. There's an extra process I have to go through. There's extra this, extra that. And um, at some point, it would be nice for it just to kind of work. So if you're looking for a system that works... And you need to print enclosed ABS. Right now, I have been recommending a bamboo. Now, I will be getting in a bamboo. And we are definitely going to compare it to the Trident. Going to compare it to the 2.4. Going to compare it against the Bugboo. But we're going to compare the... Uh, the bamboo x1 carbon against kind of my other abs printers but i don't think anything is going to compare against the ams at least at this time maybe tomorrow 
someone releases an open source AMS that just works. And I'm talking about loading. Specifically, loading. It's nice for the bamboo, from what I've seen, you just put in filament, you stick the, 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 the tip in, and then it automatically spins the spool back and forth. Well, it has a separate extruder in the AMS, so it pulls it. So you don't have to do any loading. It'll do automatic purging. It does everything automatically. And that is a really nice system. You cannot argue with that. It's a very nice system. I'm guessing it'll be open sourced very soon. Someone's going to create a version. And when that exists, that's what I would be interested in. Otherwise, you have to load filament through a buffer, which not a huge deal. But then you still have to do the manual loading and unloading and stuff like that. It's just not as seamless from what I've experienced. Now, you might have a better solution. Let me know in the comments below if you have experienced a better open source AMS or MMU type setup. So this was our uh, that frame. And now we want to do the other. Sorry, the motor mount. Now we're going to do this motor mount over here. These motor mounts are so well designed. I absolutely love these. I love these. It's really, really, really cool. There's no other way of saying it besides it's really cool. Uh, the fact that your rear extrusion isn't connected to your frame. It's connected between two of these parts. And it's... And then the motor is inside of where there would be a frame. The belts are, or the, the pulleys are all, you know, they're internal, but they're open enough to when you run your belts, it's still easy to run. Oh, we haven't put in uh, any of the, any of these things yet. So we're selling that on there. But yeah, it's this design has impressed me a lot. So I don't know who came up with that design, but uh, props to the whole Veron team for coming up with a really good solution. I like it. Because it seems simple enough, but it's still complex. And it's fun to build. Unlike inserting these T-nuts. <laughs> give Steve credit? Yeah. I I don't know if I if I can give him credit. I'd love to, but I don't know if I can. Don't know. But there's a lot of people on the Boron team that do contribute to these projects. So just the whole the whole team. Whole team gets credit. Even the people who kind of sit in the back and do nothing, I guess they get credit too. Just like high school. There's one of them. We'll see how far we get today. I don't want to stay up too late building this, so probably I'll get the rails attached, the linear rails attached, and then we'll call it. War Dazim is pretty small and tight with rolls that are reasonably well defined from what you see. Yeah. Yeah, there is the main team, and then there's the contributors. Uh, and there's actually. <laughs> Quite a few people that contribute to the Voron project. And remember, this Voron, Voron itself is a project. It's not a company. LDO has taken an open source project and offered kits for it. Um, you know, working directly with um, the team to make sure that everything's up to spec, etc. Not just selling a random kit that they found um, a VOM for. 
So that's another thing that's nice with LDO is the fact that they they work with the team. They send test parts, test kits in order to make sure everything lives up to the team's expectations. That is not an M5. That is not an M5. Is it? It isn't. There, there is one screw. There is one that isn't an M5. One of them. And it's this one back here. Why? Removing these are a pain. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be able to. Oh man. Why is there only one? That's M three. Does the part like not support? I mean, there's no. It probably has something else that attaches to it, like a cable routing or something. I'm guessing the cable chain of some sort. I don't know. Yeah, I had a nightmare job removing them. Push and gauge the spring mechanism. Well, be, yeah, but you have to like t tilt them too. You have to like push it in and then tilt it at the same time. And it's quite a challenge. You almost have to like push it like this and you can't screw anything into it because the actual thing has to um, come out what did I do last time does anyone remember how I remove these things <laughs> I really don't know Press up, shift to one side, and then roll. I yeah, I I wish it was that simple, but it's not. Because they kind of get locked in once you have them in. The LDO frames have smaller like smaller openings. So it's harder to, to get these in. Her design. You can't just roll them because you have to like get behind them to actuate them. Did I have like a screwdriver or something that I like pried up against them? <sighs> this simple frame, I I don't want to do that. That's the whole point. We're not selling the frame. Here's the why. I wish that was more bold. I really do. Because I just kind of glanced at it. Because I just did the other side. And for someone who doesn't really pay attention to instructions. <laughs> kind of a pain. Use a screwed and screw. Well, the issue is if you screw in a screw. If you screw in a screw. You can't slide it. Because the screw is the same width as the frame. So, like the, you know, I can't angle it any more than this because the screw's in there. So I have to use something that's not a screw, like a screwdriver. And use that to try to push to one side and tilt it. But you need to have something behind it, some sort, to push down as you're taking it out. At this point, it would be simpler to just remove the frame. 
or like leave it in there. Yeah, there's no there's no side motion. It kind of just goes in. <laughs> it, it goes in and it stays in. It's almost permanent. I was able to get them out though, but I think it is honestly quicker to disassemble. That means taking off this like two bars again. Okay. So to disassemble the frame <coughs> again. Oh, it looks like uh, this isn't even right anyway. Okay, well, let the re-square up this top part. You take off this, that. And then you take off this, like that. The rolling nuts come out. Uh, yeah, they they do not. Not in the LDO frames. They do not want to. Like they're designed to be kind of permanent. Because you have to like slide it to one side and then, um. Like roll them, whatever. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do it how we should do it in the first place, and that is just, uh, -oh, take a screw out, <laughs> slide them out because I've had no other better luck. But there's no way where it's out of the way because we have, um, we have this bar that takes up exactly the same width of this. So in order to get another one in. You really have to remove it. So we're going to take out two of these, which is slider it out. And then we're going to take a M3, which we should have read the instructions on, and put that in first. I had the same issue on the 2.4 with the, these nuts. In fact, I, I just used the regular hammerhead nut because I was getting frustrated with these things. I remember that now. So there we go. Yeah. If you, again, if you install it per the instructions, it's not bad. But if you miss a step, then you got to do a little bit of disassembly. <laughs> Nut bars are great. It will be great once I install the, the rails, which hopefully is in a, a step that's soon, because I want to play around with those rails. So, Alright, I'm making sure that the correct, correct side, yeah, so the M3 is over here. So we're going to take this extrusion. Take this long extrusion and use this once again to get this at the correct height. So, I'm reading the manual and I'm still running into some issues. Imagine building a fully scratch printer with no documentation, nothing. You just have a printer, you have a, like a BOM, and you have some pictures, and you go. This is a much better experience much 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 better experience um overall than a fully custom printer because i built a handful and unless you were on the actual development team it becomes a little more tricky to understand what's going on that this top one that first set of wear drivers they feel so good oh yes absolutely these look really weird but they have a perfect grip and it's a good material very nice material are you following the LDO Veron manual for the trident um, from what I can see it's the regular manual but then there are additions to it 
So at certain steps, you go to the LDO site. So the first one, literally the first step was installing these uh, TNET things. And I had skipped that because I didn't get to the, the, the LDO manual yet. So, oops. My bad. We're going to have to redo this whole top frame anyway, so I'm just going to loosely install it for now. Looks like we scratched one of the corners, so I will put that towards the top. Use MIP drivers. What is that? Fabrico sells a kit that I would be interested in trying out of their drivers. And speaking of Fabrico, we should have a Fabrico Rook kit coming in soon. So I will be one of the beta testers for uh, the Fabrico Rook kit, as well as the West 3D Rook kit, uh, which I started assembling at Rocky Mountain. And I think it's pretty much good to go. But I gotta do a full build of it first. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just. I'll have to get that all squared out because I see some of these are sticking up more than they should. I'm just gonna fix that. Well, I can. Good morning, 11343. Maybe have yellow handles. Oh, it's like a RC car thing. Gotcha. Fabrico drivers are nice. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, one of these days. One of these days. Okay, so this is back on. This looks fine. Straight enough. <laughs> now, we we'll go back to the step where we put on the motor. This is the cut where... Let me put this back on. Slide this back on. This. And then slide this over. And line them all up. Here we go. I think you're purple. This is a purple frame. So what you see is what you get with this. The lighting's a little bit, you know, different lighting conditions, but that's what looks like a person. It's it's uh, honestly a really nice shade of purple. And depending on which lighting you have, it's either like a different shade, kind of an iridescent style look. It's very lovely. And I do have a green frame on my 2.4, which with poor lighting is right here. So this is my uh, 2.4 that I built, which is currently in a pop-up tent because I don't have my panels yet, but that guy is fun. I'm excited to have the same type of thing for this. Okay, so we're gonna get these tightened up just a little bit. Nothing too crazy, just holding in place. And on the bottom, we are attaching with uh, just the just the top ones. Was I only supposed to attach the top for the others? The other side, motor mounts. No, all four. And then these ones are going to be just the two. Okay, because I. I'm guessing we're going to put something in this back corner, which is why there's nothing in there. And then more M5s. These ones we can just slide in, though. So next, we're going to do this extrusion, which is one of the remaining two that are short. This one's tapped, so it's definitely not this one. So right here, have this right here. Perfect. 
and then a bunch of M5s, which we're just going to slide on, because it's, again, easier to slide these in than it is to put them in after the fact. Why are they stopping the colored frames? Because LDO offers um, by like three different size printer. I uh, man, yeah. Every every different size printer and every different color is a whole set of boxes they have to have on hand. So it is a lot to to manage for inventory wise. So I don't blame them. And I'm guessing, just a, a rough guess, the the colored frames weren't as popular as just the black or silver frames. I'm just guessing. I'm guessing. And because of the popularity and the combination of having a lot of stuff to do, a lot of extra boxes, it makes more sense not to. Um, I have heard through the grapevines that West 3D is working on potentially getting some more color options so we'll see how that turns out I'm excited for all kinds of colored frames I want to try the orange one too but those are going out and to be completely honest unless you have a very specific color scheme in mind the colored frames are It might not look good, let's just put it that way, because you have to get a matching pairing color. So there's only so many color combinations you can really, really do with these printers. The purple is amazing. It is. It does look good, especially with the blue. Like, just, just this would be an amazing color scheme. Anodizing is a pain. Uh, the variations are unmanageable. Mmm. I think even with this kit, like the the Z axis has a slightly different finish than than these right here. You might be able to pick that up on camera. Like this is what it looks like in person. These are different than these. It's like almost matte. I think it looks really neat actually, because all of the corners are slightly different, but they're the same. So maybe that's also a reason. Maybe you just couldn't get the consistency. But regardless, I like the gray. The gray is nice. And the gray goes with any color scheme you could possibly want. <laughs> All right, so we have the two on the uh, two sets on the top and then the two on the bottom with those two like that. So, aha, yes, that is why I know exactly what these two are for. Your V2 frame is really consistent in the way it reflects as a cool color shift. Yes, that's what I've noticed. It's very, it's almost iridescent the way that the colors shift on these things. What color frame do you have? Did you have a purple frame too? I don't remember. But yes, this one definitely has different colored Z. Um, so... Not worried too much about it. This is a Rev 1 kit because that's probably all they had left in stock. And I am not complaining at all because I'm just happy to have a purple framed, one of the last purple framed LDO Trident kits. The way that these have to go in is kind of weird. It feels like these shouldn't be tightened at all. Because uh, you have to like slot them in. But it does work. So kind of like that. Very nice. Purple. That's your color. See, oh, see so a purple with blue. Okay, cool. No way. This is how NATO says to install. It is one hundred percent. You may need to loosen the M five bolts. Yeah. So it says you might have to loosen these to get it in, but that is the way it installs. It works. And then we install the um, these nuts right here. But yeah, isn't that neat how if you've never seen a trident, 
or uh, a Voron. This is how the rear frame works. It's just held in by printed part. Cool, huh? You get everything lined up. And these ones I'll have to use the ball end to screw in. That's the only unfortunate thing for this size is that it's a little bit harder to get these in, but not a big deal at all. Not a big deal. So we also want to make sure that it's uh, a little bit of plastic coming out. Uh, I want to make sure it's all aligned right. So I think it has to shift over a little bit to be even. I think the edge of that is supposed to match up with the edge of the um, thing right there. There we go. Kind of like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's a little closer. That on. You always thought the Trident was more budget friendly compared to 2.4, but the kits almost cost the same. Yeah. In terms of hardware, like the expensive stuff, it's all about the same costs. They're about the same printer. With the 2.4, you have an extra rail for the Z axis and an extra motor. That's the main cost difference. There's not really much else that's different from a BOM standpoint because the gantry is essentially the same, um, the frame is the same. The bed's the same. Everything's like the same. It's like a couple of extra extrusions here and there, an extra motor, and um, you do have all those large gears as well. You start off when you built your trident and that rear extrusion was offset. Uh, what do you mean it was offset? Like, oh, oh yeah, the fact that it sticks like forward a bit more. Yeah, it's supposed to do that. <laughs> because I was printing out some parts and I couldn't figure out what they were. Like, what the hell is this part? But it's a specific uh, adapter to go on to this. And then it's gonna, whatever direction it is, it's going to, um, yeah, like that. <laughs> it's gonna move it towards the middle. And that's because you need the belt clearance. I don't remember that though in 2.4. Oh, the whole gantry goes up and down, right? So there is no part. So in the 2.4, this whole extrusion's gone. It's gone, and you just have this right here. So you can't tell that this is inset. So, again, kind of neat. It's not even remotely lined up. Okay. Not even remotely lined up. Yeah, I yeah, know. I can pull the printer. And then, yes, that's true. You also, the cost-wise, uh, belted Z. Uh, instead of spending all your money on lead screws, belts are cheap, and you're just buying additional idlers. So yeah, the cost difference between the um, the cost difference between the the large 82 gears and the integrated lead screw motors are probably the same or close. So very interesting. The V2 does scale up better though. If you're looking for a bigger printer, V2 can go bigger because of its lower center of gravity and a reduced need. So as you increase the size of the bed, you're not adding additional weight to the gantry, at least a significant amount of weight. It's all about the same weight. And that's why V24 is a is this style. In fact, not this style, but the 2.4 style. 2.4 was based off of V24, whatever the first iteration of it was. I think it's just V24. They're like, huh, why don't we make this a smaller printer? And the concept is really nice. It's a bit unnecessary for the size printer and this Trident's motion system. That's where it's at with 
lead screw Z, so you have to worry about the bed dropping. And then uh, the tri-point leveling. That's perfect. Perfect for a 3D printer. I don't think you need much more. V2 prints at the bottom, not the top. For larger printer, expect all the uh, roll and yaw might contribute to more ringing. Yes, absolutely. This big printer behind me, because it's up, it definitely vibrates more. And as you get to the bottom, your the top of the frame is vibrating differently than the bottom because of that center of um, center mass shift. But this is a similar situation, or on the 2.4. So I don't know. Just use a stiff frame. <laughs> Just use a stiff frame. All right, now this part right here is really cool. I'm excited. So we have these parts right here. We have these parts right here, which I probably should have printed in the orange, but whatever. Flying gantry is cool as heck. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. You want to see it move because, man, it is very cool. So if you've ever seen a a 2.4, um, I apologize. The webcam is not the greatest, but uh, I can do it. Have it home. The whole entire gantry moves up and down. It's really the coolest thing. And then it can do a quad gantry level. So it does four point QGL instead of three point because there's four axes. And I haven't installed the diffuser on my stealth burner yet. So I'll probe each one of the corners. And then it moves each corner up to level. It's so, so neat. As opposed to the Trident, where this gantry is fixed at the top. So there's benefits of each. In reality, they should both print very similar. But this one, you hypothetically can push to faster speeds. But, I mean, just look at it. It looks so cool. It's so cool to watch. It's very cool. And I think this would work better. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to say, but this might work better with Tap. I'm not sure. A Cyclops. <laughs> yeah, so that's the that's the Voron um, V2. Which I'm wondering if it's gonna get a better name eventually. You know, we have code name Trident. We're gonna have a code name for the, the 2.4. So for this right here, we have I'm trying to see. I think it's like this. Yeah, it must be like this. Did it have us put in T nuts on the other thing first? Like, was I supposed to put in nuts? I was. So I gotta put in some M5 T nuts on here. Bonnie's moving forward to learn the lesson. Yeah. A, a well named printer goes a long way. Just to be fair, you know, Trident definitely sounds cooler than V2.4 or V2. It does. But a tri, uh, Trident is much better than a tri-bent. Am I right? Am I right? Or what's now the equivalent of a tri-bent for a V0? So, let's see. Nero has a bent frame V0, and Steve has a bent frame tri -dent. Am I going to have a bent frame uh, 2.4? Oh, no. Modbot's building a 2.4. Modbot's going to have the bent frame 2.4. I'm calling it now. Sorry. Sorry, Daniel. Starts to inform you of this, but your 2.4 is going to be dropped and uh, and damaged. Just to match the whole, you know, 
major YouTubers uh, dropping their printers type of thing or shipping damaging their printers. No, I don't like these. I don't like these nuts at all. I almost want to bend this. Alright, we're gonna do something jank. Do not watch this. Do not watch what I'm about to do. Do not watch. There we go. <clears throat> Nothing to see here. Now let's get this all aligned. Oh, I should have gone the other way. Damn. I can fix it. <clears throat> Alright, fix it. Yeah, don't don't watch. Don't watch. This is this is painful. Painful. Absolutely painful. You're not you're not watching anything. Oops. Wrong way. Board flex. I'm gonna start building printers and TPU. They'll avoid dropping damage. <laughs> Alright. This right here. Up a little bit like that. And this one will come up a little. Alright. So this up here, almost there. Now on this side, I don't know which side is which. This is actually for this side. Uh, it needs to go a little bit over. Okay, just like that. Or so. Then we use more M5s to get it into place. So let's focus right on that middle part. I know, someone built a V0 at a TPU. Build a Rook at a TPU? That would be cool. That would be cool. If my main channel content was more about rooks, which people want it to be. Like, why are you building a trident when you can build a rook? I get it. You guys want rook content. And don't you worry. There is plenty coming. I got the West 3D rook to build. I got rook. Rook low. To, to finish building. Which might be rook benchy. More, more info to come soon. Um, you know, like a rook that actually looks like a Benchy, like with a body kit. Maybe, maybe. No, no promises. But I'm working on that at least. And then we have the Fabrico kit that we're working on, which we're using their specific frame. Lots of work content. Lots of work content. So if you want to see more work content, make sure you're subscribed over on YouTube and Twitch. Because I stream my content on both of those platforms. Okay. I don't know if this is actually straight. This is the issue. I, I can't tell if this is now straight because... Yeah. I don't, I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is, now that these are on, I'm gonna tighten up these. Tighten these up. Okay. And I'm gonna loosen up these two, right here. And then let it naturally go where it wants to go. Oops, that's not even on. Okay, so this is kind of 
centered. I'm going to make sure that this and the bottom is tightened as well. And now, while it's relaxed, while this whole thing is relaxed, I'm going to tighten it. And that's how I'm going to get it lined up. Now, I could measure it as well, but for now, we'll go with this. You think they're 90 degrees off? You think so? It's possible. I, I actually don't know. It works. <laughs> Happy night, Mad Cat. So is it off? No, that looks... Does that look right? The long part is on... Check the manual. I am looking at the manual. Is it off? It might be off. Do I fix it? Do I leave it like this? The front looks fine. No. Uh, is it? Does it matter? Does it really matter? Yeah, it is the other way. Alright, well. Let's build it appropriately. You have a make form i3 a screen become a rook. Yeah, that's the cool thing about a rook is that it's all just basic components. It's all just basic components. But if you're looking to do a more practical printer, um, maybe look into something like a bugboo or similar, something that uses an Ender 3 bed because there's plenty of Ender 3 beds around or very similarly sized printers. Um, it's difficult. It's difficult to really recommend a custom printer because it depends on what you have and you know, have for parts and what bed you have. A custom printer really depends on the bed. And a Rook is cool, but it does use a V0 bed, which is not the cheapest. You can use glass, but you don't want to have a heated bed. So realistically, you're getting a V0 bed, uh, something like LDO's PI bed. And you have that small build volume. We have is an eight inch bed. Uh, what is that in, in 3D printing units? Cause we don't use that. We don't use those types of units here. The long way. Okay. So it goes like this actually. Okay. So it goes like that. Yeah, it does. All right. Fair enough. 200, 200 millimeters. Okay. Yeah, that's a good size. That's about the same size as the KP3S Pro bed, which has been, you know, pretty functional when I was using that printer. Needs some tool head work, but I'll work on that. Yes, I did get my trident, and um, I am only missing one small thing which is two pins that i did get shipped and i do have i do own them but i don't know where they are at the moment but those are for the rama idlers so once i find those i'll be able to install the front idlers i will just do that off stream because uh, i'm i'm not this is not going to be a follow step by step type of stream do not follow this step by step there are probably other people. Go watch Steve if you're looking to get an actual good instruction on how to build one of these things. Because we designed the damn printer. You know how to build one. But yeah, this is more of like a print and chill, like a build and chill. So I will be doing some of the work off stream because of that. I want to make sure that I get it built in a reasonable amount of time. I do have some other builds I need to do. 
Oh, this makes way more sense. It's easier to get at these screws. Cool. For a 12 year old. Yeah. Yeah, 200 millimeters is great for just like any printer, really. Because what are you going to print that's more than 200 millimeters on a regular basis? It's all underneath that. Mostly small stuff, right? So same thing as before. I'm getting them both screwed into this frame. And I'm going to loosen up these two up here. Like this. And then I'm going to wiggle it back and forth a bit. And then just let it kind of, you know, relax where it wants to go. And then reinstall this. So in terms of frame and like building, I think the 2.4 was easier because there's no none of this you have to rely on. It does all of the the trimming by itself. So if you're off a little bit on here, actually does the does the rear motor mount to the bed mount to this? It must. Difficult to say, but you know the accuracy of my Z might depend on how straight this is for example, and it might be a little bit difficult to get set up 100% correct. But that's on now. That's kind of cool. I like it. I, I dig it. Um, the front should be flush looking. Yes, yeah, so the front looks flush. The rear does not. <laughs> but you don't see the rear. Look at that. That's cool. Adjust positioning. Yeah, then you have to like square it up and make sure that both sides are 175. We're gonna leave it as is for now. But I can give it a quick measurement just in case. So 175. Bonk on. Spot on. Perfect. Perfect. Drawers are printing our 241 by 194. You're printing three of them at once. Nice. No, no drop game today on Twitch. I'm sorry. So yeah, that's that's pretty good looking. Pretty good. A little bit of a gap between these parts right here. I'm not sure why. But um see if I can crank down more on this. Oh yeah, they're just it's not tight at all, that's why. <laughs> yeah, motors. Oh yeah, well, it's it's completely loose. Huh. I guess they never tighten these. <laughs> Good thing to check your <clears throat> your screws once in a while. You might have a couple of loose screws. Visual indicator if your screws are fastened enough. Okay. That's better. <laughs> That's better. Um, the Right now, StreamYard does not allow for really much. So I'm streaming a webcam. And I'm actually using OBS. So I'm streaming a virtual OBS camera that allows me to do stuff like... Um, you know, have my manual pop up or switch to the overhead view, etc. So, or this, or this. That's what I'm, what I'm doing as a hack right now. And we'll work, we'll work with Streamer. We have contacts there. In fact, I will throw this up for a minute. But, um, technically speaking, technically... Um, this stream is sponsored by StreamYard. So they do... Uh, they do sponsor the the use of this account. So thank you to StreamYard for this. Honestly, the platform is very stable. Not as featureful as maybe some, you know, some of the, like streaming directly from OBS. But the ease of use, dead simple. So nice. So nice. 
Yeah, so we're giving feedback. I mean, we probably utilize the most bandwidth for StreamYard with MakerDeck. So check out MakerDeck on Twitch. And I think there is an affiliate uh, link over on there for StreamYard. So make sure to use that. And I would strongly recommend it after using it for about a year now. There you go. Pezlas has it. Um, but yeah, it's... It's amazing how easy it is to use, but we are looking for some additional features to be added and maybe in the future we'll see that. So if you have any suggestions, let them know. But I've been very happy with the platform. Very happy. All right, let's continue with this for a bit. Upside down assembly. So Let's flip this upside down and square off this top again. It's starting to get heavy. <laughs> starting to get heavy. So same thing when I when I built my 2.4, the top of it, <laughs> the extrusions just didn't line up. Like they weren't pressed against the table when they were installed or something. Something was wrong. So I'm just gonna re reattach all these extrusions. I see what's happening. It's like shifting as I screw it in. I just want to be close, you know. If it was close enough, it was good. Reversion has been smooth. Good. I am using the uh, 1080p version, which um, I have pretty much infinite upload bandwidth and I have a very good camera. So whatever you're seeing is about as good as it gets. And I'm curious, so if you're on Twitch and YouTube, can you let me know which one looks better? I'm wondering if, if they're using a bitrate that's higher for YouTube or the same for Twitch like 6,000 kill this per second uh, I can't actually tell I don't have that information so right now I'm just getting these this frame re re not squared up but um aligned correctly Use some corner clamps. Yeah, it's the it's the flatness of the, you know, of the top. So I'm just doing it kind of like manually at this point. That's very off. see what I'm doing, but you don't need to. You don't need to see what I'm doing. If you're enjoying this type of content, make sure to like the stream over on YouTube. And if you're watching the future, leave a comment on what future builds would you like to see? Would you like to see maybe, maybe some zero G stuff? Maybe let's see a, a zero G printer of some sort. Hmm? Maybe some more LTO kits. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe a Positron build in the future? Maybe. Uh, good first layers in 2.4, or the V2. Yeah, once it's dialed in, it's really nice. Which is a larger window. Really, even in in the, the big mode? 
what do you call it? Um, the the mode where it is bigger. K three K three would be interesting. Yeah, that would be a neat build. I mean, okay, let's just face it. I want to build all the custom printers, but I can only reasonably build so many of them <laughs> at a time. YouTube has more lag. YouTube is slightly better quality. Interesting. Very interesting. Because YouTube will serve you a better a better feed. So StreamYard kind of splits the feed up. But YouTube tends to have a better feed. More lag. Huh. Like the delay is worse. GK is the only K3 I've ever seen. Uh, oh, sorry, um... GJ, what's that one? Uh, Fabrico has one. You'd like to build a Positron? Delay is worse. A few seconds delay on YouTube. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. T Twitch. Crazy. K1 build, build and fix. I don't think there's any fixing of a K1 you could do. Uh, besides, you know, upgrading to the K2 version. Oh, yes. Do you guys want to do some rails? Do you guys want to do some rails? I want to do some rails. Let's do it. Looking forward to a Positron. Yeah. So, question. If you could buy a Positron, would you buy one? Pre-built, pre-everything, or would you want to build as a kit? So similar to a Prusa. So let's do some linear rails. So they offer this beautiful kit of their rails. They come very nicely packaged. Look at that. Crazy. Spend the cost. Eh, fair enough. Let's use V wheels. I know. Let's just you know we're not gonna use rails. Well, the first V-Wheel tried it. I'm sure it's been done. I'm sure it's been done. I don't want to see it. Don't post any pictures. Not a huge fan of V-Wheels. In most cases. Besides uh, a nice upgrade path to linear rails. So, if you're new to the channel, I really like linear rails. They're very smooth. They're very stiff. They're very easy to maintain, a.k.a. you don't have to do anything. You install it, and it works. Um, they're, they're lovely. So on these, it looks like they're greased a little bit, so I have some oil. Um, are these... Are these pre-lubed at all? Are they lubed at all? Not sure. Feels pretty smooth though. That's nice. So they need to be cleaned and lubed. Okay. All right. So hypothetically, they should be cleaned. Uh, for this, for now, we're just gonna lube them. So don't try this at home. But we're gonna take apart the carriage. We're gonna grab our thing of lube. I like to use um, West 3D's pre-applied syringe, and then give it a give it a nice a nice low amount right on the bottom of the balls. Not low amount, but put put a, a bead on the bottom, just like that. Uh, probably about like 80% of the way down, 75% of the way, and then very carefully slide it back on, um, starting with the side you started on, like this, and then catch any of the spare grease that comes out, and then rub back and forth until it's all distributed. I No, I usually don't deal with alcoholing them. Yeah. But uh, it's probably something you want to do after they're in use for a bit, because then you have additional gunk and stuff from getting on the rails, getting in the bearings. I would probably clean them out a little more thoroughly if they were used, but new, I don't know, I don't deal with it, because the lube is going to be 
it's gonna coat them all lube anyway. So it's a perfect, almost perfect preload. Falls down a little bit when you hold it. So it's a slightly um, loose preload, but that's fine. For all of the for all the MGM nines, there doesn't really matter what the preload is; they can be pretty loose because they're working in pairs. The important one is the X. The X you want to be a very smooth, probably a little bit stiffer preload. Sonic washer, <laughs> alcohol is a plug bag. <laughs> but yeah, people usually they'll soak these in alcohol, but I don't have the time for that. So at least you want to lube them. Because these are dry. They are dry. So I, again, I put a nice little bead on the bottom of these. But anytime you do this, you want to be careful because you can lose your balls. So when you're putting it back in, if you're doing it this way, you want to make sure that it's straight. Oh, see, I put it in a little bit sideways. And the balls will want to come out. So we did lose one on that one. But I didn't have it in. And you can just pop them back in. Just use your fingers. And then make sure that there's none. So I got one ball that came out on one of them. Which I don't think ever went back in. Uh, covered in lube. So I'm just going to press that in with my fingers. I've done this a couple times. So I'm not super concerned and then there we go so no balls hate the scent balls yeah sometimes they get caught in the in the grease but there you go you can leave these little covers on until you're absolutely sure that you're not going to lose them but uh, back and forth a bit to get the lube distributed would recommend removing your carriages the balls are calibrated for located eh I, I've had pretty good luck. I've had much better luck lubricating them versus... These don't have uh, fill ports. And you can't... Uh, it takes a lot of lube to go onto the back carriages. So you can, if you really have to. I don't recommend it. But you can squeeze, squeeze through the back here. But as you can see, when you do that... Like, I'll, I'll squeeze a little bit on for show. When you do that, it goes like on the on the base, so it doesn't actually go where the balls are. So you want to get the the grease really, you know, precisely under the bearings, so that it gets pressed up into the bearings when you slide it in. That's only part of the only part that needs to be greased. Even further, you can manually slide the balls around. I wouldn't recommend that on the MGN nines because the balls tend to come out more uh, ngn 12s though you can manually feed them so this is what i've been doing and it, it tends to work pretty good just make sure you go in straight and loose and you're good always gonna be a little bit excess <clears throat> and then slide it back and forth What? How many linear rails I've lubed? <laughs> it's not an insignificant amount. And the reason why I don't like doing the the hole purge is because now there's lube like in this screw hole. And you have to like clean it out before you before you continue. So this is a much cleaner method. Just you have the chance of losing balls. And ball bearings are not the same size for MGO9 and MGN12. They're not the same. They're smaller on the 9s, and they're even smaller on the 7s. So do not lose them. Or if you do, buy some spares. Go. Back on. Squeeze it till it comes up the sides of the carriage. Yeah, see, it's just, it's messy. It's a really messy process. So it's quicker just to do it this way. And then just be careful when you're reinserting it. If you go slow and line it up correctly, it usually works fine. Go. 
but I, I mean, this is quick enough for me. I'm almost done lubricating the whole ones. Now, it is a good idea to clean everything. It is a good idea. And to reapply with some protective uh, oil. I do have some PTFE oil <clears throat> that I've used before. This is an oil, so it's just Super Lube PTFE. I think you can put that on the on the outside of it all. Don't quote me on it. Don't quote me. But I use EP2 for the actual ball bearings. I find that EP2 works really well for this application. Just don't know about the PTFE stuff. I use the PTFE for linear linear rods sometimes because those carriages are a lot worse. was giving me a little bit more trouble but it's on ep2 for everything ep2 is only really useful for sealed things because it's too sticky you can't just put it on your rails because it'll attract dust and stuff uh, so i think the ptfe does a good job of not doing that i guess i'm not an expert on lube i just there's a lot of it Place a couple drops of super lube on the oil, uh, oil on the rails. So you use the the PTFE on the on the rails, keeps them from rusting. Yeah, that seems like it would be the best, the best case. Oh yeah, these are wow, wow, those are loose. Ooh, that is not a that that's a very loose preload. Wow. Yeah, I don't love that. So this is the <laughs> this is the really want the stiffest preload. Preload. Yeah, there's like no preload in here. Damn. Well, we'll see once we add lube if it if it stiffens up. But um, I wonder why their preload is so low. Interesting. I ought to ask uh, Jason about that. Because I have heard comments on uh, LDO's preload being a little bit light. It seems fine in the for the little ones, but for the MGN12, you really want this to be stiff, don't you? Get some Berserker rails? I know. Stop rubbing lube on my pants. There's got to be a better solution. <laughs> there we go. So, it is better. It is better once it's lubricated. But still, it's a lot lower than the other rails I have, I have encountered. So, this is what happens when you lubricate it. But still, that's it shouldn't drop at all. A torsional play, probably nothing noticeable. No, it's 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 probably like perfect for a three D printer, um, but I don't know. It's smooth AF. Like this is very smooth, extremely smooth. It's just not as stiff. But I mean, I can't feel anything. It's not like it's loose. It's just not as tight as it probably could. So, I'd be interested to see this with an input shaping graph compared to one of the higher preloads. Because I had that issue. I bought a lower preload CNA rail for Simple Core. I ran some input shaper graphs and they look like garbage. I replaced it with a West 3D rail with a stiffer preload and they looked fine. Um, so, we'll see. I, I'm trying this out of stock. This is the stock kit. It should be good enough. Gotta go. Yeah. Um, let's install these two rails and then we'll call it a night. So, be what? Preload? Preload? There's different levels of 
preload, which is the tension. And it's determined at the factory, I think, something like that. How stiff the how stiff the, the the pairs are, because each one of these is paired. You never want to mix up these carriages. You always want to have their pairs. <laughs> so this one is paired to this or something like that. Or maybe just the carriage or maybe just these are rated differently. Whatever. Um, they put it on one of these and they test it and they see how much preload it has. That's I guess that's how it works. Pretty sure they add larger balls. I'm pretty sure all the balls are the same. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Don't quote me. For this process, it should be pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Because we already have all of these lovely backers in, right? So it already has these screw slots. We just screw it in. So we're going to remove these protective covers. We've, we've the balls are all the same. I said, don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. We're going to take these jigs that we printed and slide them on. This is just to help align them. It's still going to have a little bit of play regardless so um i don't know i usually just yolo it <laughs> load matter how the lube is applied no it doesn't no all right these are m3 by eights she has a lot of them. Yes. A, a a significant amount of screws. It's a lot. It's like that's like a whole bag of screws right there. 173. Woo! That's a lot. Let's dump that in right in the middle here. In fact, I don't even think I can dump out the whole thing. We're gonna leave some in the bag. And then there's no messing around with the T-nuts, so we just kind of go for it, don't we? Huh. Neat. I like it. I like it. So we're going to get them all in. Loose. Hundred seventy three is a strange number. Yes, there were sixty nine of one of them. <laughs> With spares. With spares. I'm not complaining. I'm just confused. We just round up the nearest five. Uh. So these ones, they go edge to edge. So now it's on, and I don't know. I get, you know what? I think with that rail on there, there's like almost no play, right? Oh, it already self-centers it. Oh yeah, huh? So we don't have to use the jigs. The jigs are useless because <laughs> this thing has like almost no play to it. It has a little bit. It has a little bit of play, but okay, it does. It does. The jigs remain. Sort of. The jigs are still a little bit useless, but... Um, I like to, like, slide it all towards one direction. Although I know that's not completely correct. I don't know. How do you use these? How do you guys use these? You just kind of use it as, like, a reference point. Also, you want to start in the middle. So use the very middle one. Tighten that. And then work your way out. Like this. And like this. What I'll typically do is just assemble the whole thing. <laughs> and then uh, go back and adjust the squareness if needed. Um, 
keep it loose the other side is on well I like to have one side tight but yeah I... I'll just tighten it up just to have it so it's not gonna go anywhere um, now we can lose oh oh this is weird um Yeah, um, never mind. We forgot to account that we our idlers are not in place yet. So... No idlers. So we have to actually loosen up all of these. And then slide this whole thing back. There we go. And let's take one of our idlers and uh, we'll just stick it in. Still find it weird <laughs> how these go in they kind of like to snap into place hypothetically in fact we can we can screw them on in fact we probably should before we go too much further get the screws aligned i don't think we're missing out if we yeah we can we can put these on I take it off though. Oh man, how do you get it? <laughs> Once it's in, it's in. There's no taking it out. It's also the wrong side. Upside down, right? Is that her? Once it's in, it's really in. I can probably fix it. I'll we'll get it working. I think these are mirrored. Oh no, there. Oh, did I get right? Is the big side on the top? How does Ramas work? <laughs> I'm gonna check the 2.4. We're upside down currently. Um, the big side is towards the top. Yes, we have it good. We're good. It's on correctly. I think we can leave it on like that. Okay, it's fine. It's good. It's all good. So this rail can go back and forth a little. Doesn't matter. Try it again. So we're gonna start in the middle and work our way out. We're gonna use the correct size driver. We're going to use the correct size driver. Once you get two of them in, you can let go and then keep tightening them. Go. Do you want this to be in focus? I can make that happen. There we go. We have a very smooth working rail. That's not going to go anywhere because we have these idlers on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can. Yeah, I can put these on now because the the pin goes into this thing. So we can put this on as well. Were these supposed to be mirrored? You know, now that I have this, are they supposed to be mirrored? Hold on. Does it matter? Oh, it doesn't matter. Does it matter? Hold on. Huh? Huh. Neat. So, they're actually the same part of purpose. So it just flips it, which is the equivalent because one of these belts is higher than the other. Oh yeah, I remember that one. I remember. Oh dear.
did we? Did we put two nuts on here? We did. We put two nuts in this one, but we didn't put them in this one? No, we didn't. Huh. Okay. We got some more T-Nuts to put in. What size is it? This is a 250. So I'm testing out the 250 size to see if this is something that um, I could recommend. Because most people will buy a 300. But if you could do everything on a 250, then just do a 250. Just do a 250. Just do it. Oh, we also forgot a piece. Okay. I'm skipping around the manual for some reason. Let me go buy 350. No, I wouldn't just recommend going out and buying 350. 300 is plenty big. Trust me. <laughs> Alright, so those are both 5 millimeters. So right here, we're going to add on some more of these rolling rolling thingies nuts get all three yeah yeah right well if i had my choice i would have a a 300 cubed trident and a 350 2.4 that will be my ideal set of lto kit printers and then for a smaller printer I would skip the 250 and then go right down to 180 with the Micron Plus. If we're sticking in the Voron ecosystem. Go, it's in. But I'd be curious, what size printer would you get? Would anyone get a, a 250? over 300 uh, let's hide this for a second because it's blocking my face your 350 isn't isn't quite big enough is not big enough okay not big enough yeah I can I can sort of see where you're coming from in fact, I would skip right to something like a... Well, like Hevort has like a 410 size. So it might be worth skipping from a 300 with the 6mm AB belts. And then go right to 400 with a 9mm belt. That could be something to look into, you know? At the end of the day, you're going to get whatever size printer you need. So, if you're unsure, figure out what you're going to print. What the heck are you going to print? If you're just printing small things, most stuff fits on a Prusa. If something fits on a Prusa, it'll fit perfectly fine on a Trident. But if you're printing stuff that can just fit on a Prusa, just get a Trident 250. Don't get a 300. I would recommend having at least one 300 printer, though. It is nice to have. It is a good size. Damn it. Just get both. Just get both. Think about the biggest thing you'll ever want to print. Well, don't think about that. Because everyone's going to say, oh, well, just print a helmet. But that's what I said. I specifically wanted to build a big Core XY to print helmets, and I haven't printed a helmet yet. It's a fun thing to do, but I I haven't printed one yet. The only things that I printed at 300 millimeters were specifically scaled up because I had the build volume. I didn't actually have to print them at that size. So interesting concept, eh? You can print helmets very comfortably on a 350. Uh, yeah, a 300 is perfect for smaller helmets. But, if you're just printing it for fun, and you don't actually have to print it, I don't know. I wouldn't have a whole printer that you have to, especially an enclosed Core XY. Think about this. 
the heat up times on a 350 are probably worse than a 250 by a lot because the chamber temp is, or the chamber size is bigger. So you might be spending an extra like 10 minutes preheating your chamber for the same print. So if you're looking for a faster printer, I might recommend a 250. Both fast in heat up times and in print speeds. Loving the purple and teal. Oh, it's going to get even better. We have orange to throw on here. We have a uh, pop pink from Flymaker. But thank you. It is looking pretty good. All right now we're working a little bit out of order. Stephen Poole has two big printers and hasn't printed a helmet. I don't have the space. Like, honestly, I don't have the space to print helmets. I just don't. I might print one for fun, but then what am I going to do with it? Um, so unless I have a specific display spot I want to put it... Eh. Like, I have a, a few big things that... Like, um... Like Moon City, for example, right? It's a fairly big print, but it's still shelfable. I can put it on a shelf. Buy an LDO Trident kit in two weeks, one paycheck away. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if you are considering buying one, um, I do have a, a West 3D affiliate link, and it does help me out. So if you are thinking about buying a LDO kit, make sure to check out West 3D. They've been very supportive of the channel. And I love working with them, so. You can also um, look at getting one of the self-source kits. You want to start with helmets, but you like to do something bigger. Yeah, so I like big prints. I like big things that you can 3D print. And I cannot lie. But generally, they're more functional. I printed the IKEA lac table. That was a fun print. It really was. It was a fun build, too. And it's useful. I have it in my living room. I'm actually using it. So it's not just a print that I do and then don't use. I only want to print stuff that I'm really using, which is why I... I kind of lean towards functional prints most of the time. So... The reason for a big ABS printer for me would be for printing outdoor stuff. So, toys for my kid, maybe working on some, like, Power Wheels style mods. That would be pretty cool. That being said, a lot of projects are developed so you can print them on a smaller printer. And a lot of pieces print better on a smaller printer. Uh, like if you're trying to print something that's really big in ABS, unless you have a really good ABS printer setup with, you know, heated chamber, um, good build plate adhesion, etc., you might not even be able to utilize your full print volume. <laughs> so keep that in mind too. But easier to print and assemble if you had a 300. Uh, what, what do you mean? But right now we're in a space where the most popular printer size is a, uh, a, a 250 Prusa. The lac table? Oh. Well... <clears throat> I mean, if you print that big of a solid object, it's going to want to warp. It's going to want to warp. So. It's just, you know, slightly smaller with more pieces. It, might, it still makes sense to me. All right. I'll probably be out uh, by the time you, you get back. Because I'm almost done. That's what brims are for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cheating. <laughs> okay, so same thing. I'm going to press in the same direction. 
hypothetically they'll have the same offset. But we'll start in the middle and work our way, work our way out. And then once we get the whole gantry on, we'll be able to tell if it's even or not. I'm more concerned about getting the individual rails parallel to the frame versus being the exact right distance away from each other because you should be able to compensate for a little bit when you install your install your um, gantry um, X gantry Feeding says the guy that gets free printer price from LDO. Hey, I work for it. I work for it. <laughs> But yes, LDO was kind enough to supply the kit for this build. I just paid for shipping. So I really appreciate it. And um, I mean, I, I I purchased a bunch of LDO stuff before. And that's what I typically do. When I recommend a product, it's usually because I've experienced it. And it's hard to recommend stuff without actually getting my hands on it. Like all these new printers like the fast printers, I can't recommend them. I, I can't personally recommend them because I have not played around with it. And the only stuff I've seen is videos. And a lot of the videos that I watch on these printers are, they don't look great. So I don't know. Who knows? All right, John's back. So let's end it. We got the rails on. We got that one on. We got that one on in the back. Look at that focus. Look at that. So we're still missing the pins. I'll try to find those. They're probably around somewhere. Your 0 0.1 kit was from LDO. Nice. I would probably get a LDO kit as well for a V0. <laughs> I surely would. I think most of us feel the same about making recommendations. Yeah. Look, unless I have something, I don't know if I can recommend it. I can... I can give my best judgment on something, but that's not a full experienced recommendation. I'm going to have a different experience than you are, and maybe um, there's something about something that I've noticed that you haven't, or whatever. Like, for example, the Solval SVO6 Plus, everyone thinks it's a great printer. I immediately was running into issues where the Z-axis was becoming untrammed. So I had to develop a mod to link the Z-axis together. Like, that stuff isn't sh really talked about in reviews. I don't know why. So unless I get something and I play around with it, it's going to be difficult to give my honest recommendation. So... So far, um, the 2.4 build was great, and it was essentially, you know, what LDO has. This is even better. So far. Huh. If I would have followed the manual for some of the steps, maybe that would have helped. So there's one last piece I want to get on, and then we will call it a night. And then continue when I continue next. So if you like this style of format where I'm streaming both to Twitch and YouTube, let me know. Otherwise, um, I can just stream these YouTube. I can just stream the Twitch. I can stream them more casually as like a build and chill versus like a dedicated build. I don't know. I think this is fine for what we're doing. And this is the last piece. So it does print with a little piece that covers this. I don't have that, so I can either reprint this or just install it. So it's our first accent piece. It goes on just like this. It's got to easily bend two M5s. That's weird. So this is what our our gantry is going to tram up against right here. Pretty neat. Did you put your mod up? Um, I have not. I'm still testing it, as you should do with any mod that you're trying to release. I'm testing it. I'm making sure it looks good. I'm having some additional Z issues or Z kind of artifacts after I've installed it. So I have to 
figure out what the issue is if um you know where where is the issue coming from so i'm gonna play around with it a little bit more before i release it uh let's see what screw size are these so m5 by 16 m5 by 16 shoot what size are these ones right here i have no idea this might be 16. Do you clipperize your SVO6 Plus? Yes. In fact, uh, if you're on YouTube, check out my channel. I did a live stream where I both unboxed and clipperized the SVO6 Plus. Did I do the right size? Guess we can find out real quick. Yeah, that looks right. Cool. Must have already taken those out of the bag. Did you see uh, three three thousand millimeter second? No, I don't think I have. Did I? Three thousand? That's absurd. Yes, it's fun to print at, or to like to show off, but you ain't printing at three thousand millimeter second. I mean, you, you can, but there's. It's very enthusiast. As much as I love fast printing, man, is that slightly overkill. <laughs> Ever so slightly overkill. Like, we have printers just breaking the 100 millimeter second wall barrier. 200 millimeter second walls barrier. Uh, good for him, though. He's he's doing a great job with his printer, and I would love to build a VZBot one day. I sure as heck would. It's just so fast. That's probably using LDO superpowers. Is that an all-wheel drive or just uh, two of them? Probably all-wheel drive. We're looking for M3 by 12. M3 by 12. There we go. You have extra Pi 4 sitting around? Yeah, I, I won't run up printer without clipper now just because that's my workflow um it's too awkward to use a marlin based printer because you just can't control it from your computer you have to go to it and press some buttons and sometimes the menus are inconsistent it's just it's just a weird experience i did see the v0 <laughs> the v0 is ridiculous it's, it's, again it's Oh, it's so fast. So fast. All right, there's that part. That's where it's going to cram against. And it does have a little bit of a... It's a magnetic... Well, it's a magnet for a hull sensor. A hull effect sensor. I don't know how it works, but uh, it's neat. I guess this end stop um, PCB would have a hull effect um, sensor with a magnet. So, we're just using this stock switches which is fine. you don't need to be accurate in the xy hell i'd use sensorless if uh if i felt like setting it up we'll drive water cooling stuff motor yeah like you have to like they get they get hot they get freaking hot All right, so that is all for today. So we have the the rear motor pods mounted. Uh, we have this part squared up. It should be good. More rail and rod lube education soon. Um, just lube your stuff. If your if your printer sounds crunchy, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you need some type of help. Some type of help. Some quick lesson. There's two main types of lubricant that at least we use for 3D printers. There is a, a thicker grease that's actually, you know, it's thick. It's it's grease. It's a it's a thick, thick grease. And then there is a lightweight oil. They're very different. Don't confuse them. These do not go on the ball bearings. Use these. 
Not these. Use these. This is useful for coating surfaces, as far as I'm aware. So you would want to, you know, maybe when you're done with this, take a, uh, a small dab. It's a very small dab. Like that. And then rub it on the whole thing. So that gets a light coating of oil to help prevent some, uh, you know, rust from forming. Don't mix them either. Yes. Yes. So this is just the top. So the actual contact area for the, the, for the EP2 is only in these slots right here. That's the only spot that they are making contact with. So you can apply a little bit of the light oil onto the top to help seal it, prevent rust, which lube you want to use grease grease for the ball bearings grease so get that good coverage i would say a very light coating and less is more for that type of thing you're printing your rookery or rookery i swear they're everywhere i can like look around and i can see like a bunch of rookeries uh, so that's a little bit of a a, a lube a lube lesson and for linear rods, if we're talking about that, linear rods, the bearings are sealed. Do I have one next to me? I do. So, that's uh, probably a little dirty, but yeah, see, this is a great example. This is dirty because I had set it down. These are rubber or whatever, like uh, material. But this is a sealed bearing. Once this is on a rod, it's sealed. There's nothing getting in. There's nothing getting out. So the only way to lubricate these is to physically apply a grease, not an oil, but a grease into this. And then as you... different size but as you slide this onto the onto the rod you would actually press your finger up against it and then slide it over which would force the grease into the ball bearings of course you want to use the right size <laughs> looks ridiculous <clears throat> so that's my suggestion most printer manufacturers will not grease their bearings for whatever reason just putting a light coating of oil on these rods won't do anything. It literally do nothing, nothing, because the friction in these are the ball bearings rubbing up against each other. Think about that. How is oil on these rods going to affect the the ball bearings rubbing up against each other? So. <clears throat> Yeah, look at this bokeh. Pretty nice, eh? <laughs> we can get even more bokeh. Gosh. Look at this, uh, look at this beautiful, beautiful bearing. Look at that. Not a hand model, but. Alright, that's all we got for today. Bye! It's been a fun stream. Thank you guys for showing up. I really like it when I can build a printer and have you guys torment me. It's fun. It's fun. So this has been the first part of the Trident build series. I will be working on it a little bit off stream just because I want to get this thing actually done. And we can hang out doing some other printers anytime. So make sure to check me out at twitch.tv slash zombiehedgehog. Or on YouTube.com slash Hedgehog Makes. Ugh, what time? I need water too. Good time to end. So let me find someone to raid out to on Twitch. Who do we have today? Uh, do, 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 do.
Okay. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Let's go read CP Geek. Been chatting with us all night, so let's go give him a nice raid. Um, if you are on YouTube, make sure to like this stream and leave a comment down below. Uh, comments actually do help out a lot for gaining um, recommendations from Twitch or from Twitch from YouTube. So let me know if you like this. I'm about to lose my voice. So bye. Thank you to the LTO. Thanks a lot. It's been a great kit so far. Bye. Oh man, where's my? Oh, where's StreamYard? Where's StreamYard? Ah, there we go. Bye, bye. Thank you, Elio. Thank you. Thank you, West3D. Thank you, everyone in chat. Thank you, thank you. And goodbye.